I'm Harrison Schmidt, a former astronaut, uh, flew on Apollo 17, and now there are many discussions about uh, why we should go back to the moon, and I think there are many answers for that. They're, they come at all different levels. Uh, one, uh, of course, is uh, a, a very broad philosophical level that human beings uh, are going to move into space someday, and that Americans should be part of that movement. Uh, we always have been, and there's no reason for us to stop now. Uh, it is important from what we call a geopolitical uh, stage that uh, America be uh, a, uh, not only competitive but a, uh, a leader in uh, deep space exploration. Uh, the moon certainly op offers an opportunity for, for the establishment of civilization. The resources are there uh, to live uh, once you are established and indeed Mars has resources that would support independent civilizations as well. Uh, that's part of the, of the long future and probably in the lives of some uh, young people alive today on Earth, we're going to see the beginnings at least of that movement of human civilization and human, uh, the human species out into deep space. Uh, there are also very, very strong scientific reasons why we should uh, understand the moon better than we do. Uh, the moon is sort of the uh, place where we understand the early history of the solar system. Uh, it does not have an atmosphere, it does not have oceans or water or weather that uh, can change its uh, surface. Uh, the Earth has gone through many, many changes in, the la in billions of years, but the Moon has not, and, and therefore records the, what we call the impact, uh, our bombardment history of the inner solar system uh, uh, for, since it was formed about 4.6 billion years ago. Uh, the most important part of that history is the first seven, eight hundred million years, which is a history that has essentially been erased on the Earth. Uh, and it's been erased uh, partially on Mars, entirely on Venus, uh, but probably also uh, that history is recorded on Mercury. Uh, Mercury's a lot harder to get to than the Moon. The Moon's only about three days away, and we ought to take advantage of that. Uh, that bombardment history is important because it occurred uh, during a time when life was forming here on this planet. And so that uh, the, for the creation of life on the planet and the bombardment history, the impact history of the Earth are very closely related. There's also, there are also energy resources on the moon that uh, can be uh, used here on Earth. Uh, there, uh, it's called a, a helium-3, a light isotope of helium that makes a nearly perfect fusion fuel for fusion power reactors. Fusion is the process by which atoms are combined to produce energy, in contrast to fission, which is a process by which atoms are split uh, to produce energy. And the moon has our only nearby resource of this uh, very valuable uh, helium-3 uh, that could be uh, produced on the moon and shipped back to Earth for use in power plants here on this planet. We're going to need many different kinds of energy in the future, and the lunar helium-3 may turn out to be uh, one of the most important. In the process of producing helium-3, you produce many byproducts, including water and hydrogen and oxygen, uh, all of those things that you uh, also need in order to support those first human settlements on, the, on a small planet that we call the moon.